Hi, I'm Jacob. We're so happy you're here with us. We're just a few minutes away from beginning our service. We'd love to know where you're watching from or how we can pray for you. So please let us know in the comments and be sure to share this content with your friends. If you want prayer or prophetic encouragement, we offer free ministry available on first come, first serve basis on our website. Be sure to check the description of this video for more information. Thank you so much for being here with us again, and we hope to see you again soon. Here's a word from some of our other ministries. Are you ready to change the culture of your marriage? We'd love to have you at the next set of Bridge Marriage Trucks. And it's not just for troubled marriages, it's for hurting to healthy and everyone in between. Also, for singles, dating, and engaged couples mm -hmm. who just want to learn about marriage from a biblical perspective. We would love to see you guys there. Yep. I guarantee that each and every one of you have all had something said like this over you sometime in your life. You sound just like your mother or you act just like your father. Why does this happen? It happens because we have a physical DNA coming down through our family line. Did you know that we also have a spiritual DNA? The Bible calls it blessings and curses. And it's interesting, in Deuteronomy 27 and 28, the blessings and curses are listed. And the, the curses are four times as much as the blessings. Shortly I'm holding a seminar where I'll be explaining about generational curses and, and how to break them so God's blessings can be released in your life. We'd love to see you there. Do you want to see God heal through you? Join us for an upcoming weekend training to be equipped, trained, and commissioned to join our healing teams here at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria. This local two-day in-person seminar will be jam-packed with teachings, Q&A, and activation, so you'll be confident to minister God's healing here on a healing team. To learn more about this training, please look at the description below. We look forward to seeing you there. Good evening, Healing Rooms. Good evening, Healing Rooms. Good evening, Paul. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for this sanctuary. Hey, Graham. Thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We always show up different, but you are always the same. You're so good, Lord.
seek, then we will find We're calling on your name We're calling on your name
begotten of the Father. You are my one and only Son, not my will, but yours be done. And all we can do is stand in wonder and sing. Beauty, beauty, beautiful, glory, glory, glorious, you are, you are. Beauty, beauty, beautiful, glory, glory, glorious, you are, you are. Only one 
on this earth and say, Lord, come, 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 Lord Jesus, even so come. We're going to be a people that are praising him day and night. And the praise is going to rise. And it's going to be like incense and it's going to be continual. And it's going to be from every tongue and every tribe and every corner of the world. And when that happens, when the earth is praising him, going to be enthroned. He's going to come back and he's going to be upon his throne. The praises of his people. And I just feel the heart of the Lord. He just wants to communicate to you, your praise is important. No matter what you're going through, when your eyes shift onto him, and you see him, and you just sing a simple song, maybe you're driving in your car, washing dishes, doing your school, doesn't matter. When your heart rises in praise to Him, something happens in the heavens. We don't understand it. And when His people worldwide praise His name, 
he's going to return to a people who are praising him and they welcome him with praise. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't anything else but the truth. Like they, there's nothing else that we could, that we could be doing that's more important, more valuable. And it's something we can do all the time. High, low, rich, poor, old, young, small, great, doesn't matter. When we meet Jesus and we worship him, what is he looking for? The Father's looking for worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. And when he finds it, he's gonna come dwell in their midst. And I just feel the weight of this invitation from the Spirit of the Lord to be a people of singing, to be a people of praise, to cultivate that in your own life, in your own rhythms of life. These times are so beautiful. Makes me want to cry just hearing the people of God sing praises to the Father. But this is going to be continual. It's an exercise. And when it bleeds into our daily life and we can't help but singing, when we want to, when we want to cry, but we turn it into singing, when we want to point the finger at some of them, but we turn it into quiet worship in our heart, that is going to change the spiritual atmosphere of your home, of your life, of the city. So Jesus, we receive this message from you, myself included, Lord. But I thank you. I thank you for the great honor, the great privilege I have to stand right here and to worship you with my voice and to sing privilege, Lord, to lead in song, to lead your people in praise to you. But I ask you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart, that we would be a singing people, that we would be a people who worships you in good times and bad times, day and night, that we would wake up with a song in the night. We would wake up, Lord, singing your praise. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Let us be a people of praise genuine from our heart, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. one on? Yep. Okay. So Lord, we do. That's so good, David. I mean, there is nothing. I think about that all the time. There is nothing else. I mean, none of us are going to get to heaven and say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have wasted that night worshiping God. I mean, waste it in a good way, but nobody's going to regret doing this. There is nothing better. Spending time in his word, we're never going to say, oh man, I could have been watching TV and I did that. It's never going to happen. It is amazing when you think about it that we get to do this on a Monday night. I mean, it's amazing. We're grateful to you. When we were in worship, I just kept thinking about Moses when he gathered the Israelites around the mountain. And you guys, you know this, the mountain shook, smoke came out, fire, when the presence of God came, thunder, lightning. And I was thinking, what would we all do for reals if we were in worship like this and all of a sudden, thunder and lightning in this room it could happen if we got into that place oh, thanks Jacob Lord we love you so much we are so eternally grateful for you I love that we get to join in there is nothing I can't think of one thing I'd rather be doing not one thing you are the one thing God we love you so much Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everybody. That was really beautiful. Don't you love our worship team? All, every team we have, you know what?
I love a lot of things about them, but one thing I really love is that they don't feel like they need to stick to a program. That's so good. They, I mean, they just flow in whatever the Lord's doing. I love that. So thank you guys. Wow. This has been a great weekend. Stacy's going to come up in a few minutes and share a little more. But um, before we do, this is the healing rooms. And on Monday nights, we like to show a couple of testimonies <laughs> that um, happened in the last few weeks or so. So I don't know which ones we have, but do we have those, Tristan? Or Okay. Whenever I don't do this, they're waiting, and when I do, they're not. Okay. Well, old is good, too. God is doing so many healings, and it's just encouraging sometimes just to see what he's doing in the people's own words. So will that work or no? I can move. Okay. You ready? Okay. <laughs> So the reason we like to show testimonies is because it just builds faith when you see somebody saying, hey, I came in here with this condition, God touched me and now I don't have it anymore. It gives hope to people, whatever you're asking for right now and you see this, it just begins to stir that up that if he did it for them, he'll do it for me. Ready? Okay, so let's watch one or two of these. When the team started praying for me, uh, a hand was placed on my head and I felt these electromagnetic shocks and I knew that it was healing. And then I prayed again and the hand was put on my head and there was nothing there so I knew it was God. And then the second thing that I received was a word regarding the eye of the storm. And it was confirmation because I have been watching storm chasing because I love chasing storms and I knew and the person knew, and God knew that I can only find peace if I get to the eye of the storm. And then the last thing that was praying over me was strength, from the like the strength of an eagle, and that's my last name, so that was confirmation as well. So God gets all the credit, and I'm healed, and I'm walking back. Is there one? one yeah. I was in pain with my family, hip arthritis, and I uh, have a difficulty walking. But now I'm free of my wheelchair and I came. So you came in, sitting in that wheelchair, I saw, and you were relying on that cane. Do you need that cane right now? Or are you just hold it? So demonstrate what you can do now. Just walk a few feet and we'll capture you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Oh. This was on a Tuesday morning healing service. She came in in the wheelchair. So, thank you, Lord. So, Tuesday, Tuesday mornings we started an uh, open healing service where anybody can come and then we do kind of conference-style prayer. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday we do in the healing rooms, which is amazing too. But Tuesdays we're doing that. So, that lady came in from L.A., I think, and a couple weeks ago. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. So we have a couple of things coming up in the near future. The best thing is to go on our website and check out what's happening. But one thing I want to highlight is June 17th, I think it's the 17th, it's a Monday night, 17th or 18th, whatever's Monday night. Uh, James Gall is going to be here and with Stacy, Julie, and um, I'm not sure who else, they are doing a week long or four day School of the Prophets. And so we are gonna be having our regular week but what's going to happen is that Monday night, the, whoever signs up for the school, they'll join us on Monday night and they'll be part of our worship. And then James is going to speak that Monday night. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, the school will join us in here for our regular worship. And then, um, then they're going to 
stay in here or we'll see how many people sign up. But anyway, it'll be our regular time plus the school. So if you want to go to the school, you need to go online and register for that. This is James Gull's West Coast School of the Prophets and Seers. And I forget what the fee is, but there's, there's a fee for that because it's an actual school. It's going to be amazing. So put that on your calendar that week of June. Um, and then I'm doing something. So this is May 1st. So starting June 1st, if you want to sign up for this on your way out, leave your email with the front desk and your name and tell you what you want. This is kind of a summer Bible reading challenge. And what I'm going to do is we're going to read through the entire Bible through the summer. So it's summer Bible reading. June, July, August. June 1st, you start Genesis 1. August 31st, you read Revelation 22. And so instead of doing a little bit here and a little bit there, we're going to, as a group, of course, you read it at home. And I've found it takes about a half hour a day. And if you do that consistently, a half hour, what will happen is, it sounds like a lot if you've never done it. And if you have, it's a breeze. What happens is when you start in Genesis and read all the way through, you, you find yourself with an overview of the storyline. And whoever wrote the one-year Bible, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad, but I found personally with the one-year re Bible reading plan, it's like if you pick up a novel and today you read chapter one and then tomorrow you skip over to chapter 15 and then the next day chapter 30 and then you're back to two and it's confusing. When you read it all the way through, I have done this several times, and there's nothing that has changed me in the word more than doing this. This is not devotional reading. It's not where you read and you focus on a verse and you spend some time. That's amazing. You need to do that too. This is not study. I love to study. So the temptation is when you're reading, something's going to hit you and you go, I got to stop and study, but you can't. You have a little folder, by, or a little journal, whatever, and write down, study later. Take a half hour every day for three months and just read. When the three months is over, you are going to thank me for doing this because it will change your life. I'm not kidding. So it, it, you have a month to think about it and pray. We're going to start June 1st. You want to do this. Believe me, it will literally change your life. So Stacy, you want to come up? And she's going to share this weekend. We had just an amazing business conference. And... Yeah, it's, it sounded business, but for me personally, as she's coming, I just thought it was so amazing to hear these different business leaders so on fire for God with such amazing stories of ministry in the marketplace. It, it was just, it was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Kingdom of God is advancing, forcibly advancing. So anyway, it was awesome for those of you who came. I see a number of you that were actually at the event, so um, you, you got blessed. Uh, but I have to, before I do anything, I have to tell you that last night at 6.11 p.m., my granddaughter was born, so Vashti... Vashti had her baby. Vashti and Jonah had their baby last night. And so, um, uh, yeah, just a beautiful little girl. I was, had I been more organized, I would have put a picture up there to show you. But um, I just had so much to do today that I couldn't do it. Anyway, uh, we are going to, the, the, the event was so amazing that we are going to actually allow people to go on Eventbrite for one week only and sign up to listen to the archives. And people that were watching at home said you could feel the power of the testimony and the power of the impartation going through the airwaves. It was so amazing and extraordinary. And we had... Uh, 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 you know, we had speakers like uh, uh, Jenny Ignarski, who gave a whole thing on impact investing, how to take your resources and use them for kingdom impact and values impact. It was amazing on Thursday night. We had uh, uh, Marshall Belcher come and talk about doing whatever we learned at church, doing the kingdom in the marketplace. He happens to be a CTO at a tech company. We have this amazing group that is creating what they call Life First, uh, 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 an electronic uh, uh, metaverse uh, of kingdom values where it's interactive to educate the next generation in uh, kingdom values. It's, it was amazing. We had um, Neil Arnold, who is walking in levels of revelation. I've walked with him for about, you know, eight years since he came to, with me to Brazil the first time, him and his wife. But I'm telling you, it's, it's, 
It's powerful, the wisdom that that man carries along with the authority and the power. It's, he's walking in a spirit of revelation and literally comes on you while you're there. We also had uh, Ralph Plum talk about distributing wealth to the poorest of the poor, to women and children at risk, orphans. We had our very own Walt and Nick Taylor talk about City Serve and give everybody tours of uh, the warehouse that is starting from our own healing rooms to serve the whole city. Thank you, Rick and Lori, for doing that. Anyway, we had so many incredible things. We had Tina Alton talk about female entrepreneurship and small to medium businesses that, to help women start their own companies all over the world from the poorest of the poor. And the Pudlos had, uh, what? like, I mean, they showed pictures, a little, a little video that they uh, were on Andrew Womack with uh, of living in a Volkswagen with their whole worldly possessions. Can you imagine your entire possessions and you sleeping in the Volkswagen? I mean, I could see a Volkswagen van, but it was a Volkswagen Beetle. It was a little tiny Volkswagen car. And they started out with $250 to their name and have grown into a multi-million dollar multinational corporation just from biblical principles. And you will come into that understanding that if it can happen for them, it can happen for you. So it was, it was so many great things that I, uh, and, and also we had Nathan French, who I get to introduce right now, and I would say he was the funniest one. I, I would say he was hilarious. And uh, we had highs, we had lows, we had sober moments, we had uh, joyful moments, we had um, pensive moments. But uh, Nathan has just an, an understanding, uh, like few that I've met, of how to actually Although all of the speakers used the prophetic in the marketplace, he had just this swift obedience to the word of the Lord that brought about transformation in lives and cities and ideas and entrepreneurship. So I am so honored to introduce Nathan French. He's a pastor in Seattle. Are you a pastor? He's like, uh, he's like the Apostle Paul, who was a full-time tent maker raised all his own finances. He has buildings and businesses and all around the Seattle area, land that the Lord told him to buy, things that he's doing. And he has a church that he's pastoring full time. And the Lord told him to start this thing, awaken the nations, to actually shake nations and wake them up for the kingdom of God. So Nathan, if you will come up here, we are so honored to have you here. Thank you for staying. Uh, Nate, Alan Strudwick was supposed to be here tonight but he couldn't get across the border and uh, from the Canadian border because he wasn't vaccinated. So they sent him back at the border because many of you might not know this, but the United States is still under the Emergencies Act from COVID. It's not been lifted. So if uh, people that aren't vaccinated from other countries can't enter into the United States of America. And uh, he got turned back at the border. And so um, Nathan filled in for him and it was wonderful. So Nathan, thank you so much for coming. And I want you to be thinking because we are learning in the healing rooms how to sew. Neil gave this most amazing revelation on about sewing, but sewing it's it, and multiplication is the way of the kingdom of God from the very beginning, from Genesis 1-1. Blessing, the, the first thing the Lord blessed, Wesley taught us on the blessing. He studied the word blessing for 2,000 hours. He gave a whole message on it. The, fir the first creation that he, he made, birds and fish, was the very first time blessing is heard. And he just continued to bless and bless and bless and cause fruitfulness and multiplication. And that is God's intention for you. So it is more blessed to give than to receive. So we will take an offering at the end. So just get ready for that too. Amen. Thank you, Stacy. Can you believe she's here? Come on, baby's just born. And she's like, I got to get to the healing rooms. That's amazing. Well, let's pray. Father, we're just so excited to be in your perfect will to sit in this place with you and with one another 
with an expectation for good. And Lord, I'm just asking that every person who has a need in their heart to see the fulfillment of a promise, that it would come quickly. And Lord, we just give this time to you. This is your meeting. I'm your vessel. And uh, we just say, have your way. Have your way in us. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our thoughts. In Jesus' name, we bind the strong men over the city, city block, and render every evil assignment void and useless. We thank you, Lord, the witchcraft is under the blood. Uh, yeah, the Lord showed me there was a witch that was cursing me tonight. I thought that was interesting. And you know what I said? I said, well, praise God. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, my Bible says our God raises a standard against him. You know, that standard is an increased anointing. So sometimes I'll feel a sudden surge of an increased anointing and I know exactly why it's there. So we can overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Some of you know that God uses your story to give him glory. It's also a prophetic word as the testimony of Jesus is as the spirit of prophecy. So I get excited to hear what God's doing in people's lives and it just, it just increases my faith because I hear what he did and I know that's prophesying about what he'll do again in the life of another, amen? Come on, give it up for Jesus. Isn't God good? Well, when you guys are on fire, I love to come down. I just honor this house, this healing center. This is a great place to belong. And, um, and Rick and Lori, I, you know, when I first met them, I thought, wow, they believe in all the stuff. They believe in the gifts. They believe in bearing fruit. Uh, and this is a place of hope. And the Lord spoke to me tonight about hope. But anyway, just to honor you. And man, I'm excited because I feel like your husband's getting all healed up. And there will be a new chapter, a new wave of God's miracle power that will come out of, of that temporary squeezing. That brokenness is being used for the glory of God. And so some of you, you've been through some stuff, but praise God for that. The Lord started showing me if the enemy tries to fight you, it's not because he's going to, it's not because you're going to lose. It's, it's because he's fighting you because he's, he knows you're going to win. He doesn't fight people that are not a threat. So if you are a threat to darkness, my goodness, you're gonna come out shining brighter than before. You're gonna come out burning hotter than before. And some of you are gonna be so glad you showed up tonight because the King of Kings is here. And I'm, I'm actually excited to hear what I'm gonna say because I really don't know. I don't have a plan. I just trust God. Many years ago, he said, Nathan, don't worry about what you will say, but speak as though you're speaking the very oracles of God. Well, I know God and I hear his voice and it makes me kind of dangerous. Amen. So I don't know if you feel a little dangerous, but when you wake up in the morning, the enemy freaks out. Okay. He, he whoa, she's up. Oh, there he is. Ah, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I laugh because God saved me. I mean, I was a preacher's kid backslidden and lukewarm and I was in Florida. I was a surfer bum and, and I was partying hard for like two years. And the short story is I was miserable in my sin. I thought real freedom was to do whatever I want and I realized that it's not to do what I want, it's to do what he wants. But I wasn't surrendered, so I was incorporating God. So I said, when people said, are you a Christian? I'd say, oh yeah, but I live like the devil. And so uh, my heart was divided. No wonder I didn't have the power to overcome. And God started to show me, um, you know, I want you to live for me. And I was rebellious. I wasn't surrendered. I wasn't going to live fully for God. I, I was in a church growing up and I didn't see any power. I didn't see miracle signs and wonders. So to me, it was all hypocrisy. And I didn't want to be one of them, the you know, spiritually proud people. And I thought, well, I tried to obey the commandments. I can't even obey the first one. Who are we kidding? I'm not going to try to do this and, and just fail. You know, I can't even, as soon as I you know, do the wrong thing. I'm disqualified. I just didn't feel like I could do it. I didn't feel like I measured up. But anyway, I found myself one day hooked up to my exhaust pipe with a garbage bag over my head. I got really stoned so I didn't have to feel the fear that I was dealing with, fear of failure, fear of man, rejection, all the things I was dealing with. Um, and I found myself uh, unconscious on the floor of my surfer van in Florida. And I did not uh, know what happened to me. I woke up in a place where people go to try to harm themselves. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't know why I was there. I didn't even know what happened to me. And uh, I remember, I'll never forget, my dad walked in the room and he walks over to me. I started crying because I knew who that was. And, and he reached out and he grabbed my hand 
And he said, son, do you know what day it is? And I said, I don't. He said, today is your birthday. He said, the devil tried to take your life, but the good Lord intervened. And I've, I've come to take you home. Well, doctors and specialists say, you'll never function in society. And they wanted to give me countless medication and constant supervision, because if I was cooking, I might forget what I'm doing and burn the place down. And, and so they couldn't really leave me alone. And some men and women in a church like, like, well, like this, I know it's not a church, but still we're having a gathering and it's kind of like, you know, and so they laid hands on me in the name of Jesus. Every brain cell the devil tried to steal be returned to Nathan. And God began to heal my mind to rebuild it with the truth in his word. And somewhere along the lines, I caught a fire that I never knew. One day God told me, he said, Nathan, watch this. And boom, I was getting an open vision. I was wearing a blue top and, and red shorts and there was a blue team and a red team. And I was right down the middle of this, this war between the blue and the red team, wearing both colors, getting shot at by both sides. And I said, Lord, what is going on? And he said, choose this day who you will serve. You can't serve both God and mammon. You can't serve the kingdom and the world. You've got to go all in. Choose your side. And I was like, ah! And I was like, okay, I'm with you. <laughs> oh. And I got on the right side. My goodness, he lit my fire. I started going all in. I'm like, Lord, I just give you my whole heart. I give you my whole life, my hopes, dreams, fears, failures. I'm yours. Here I am. Use me. And man, it's been an amazing ride. I wake up every day, no joke, excited about what God is about to do. And I believe that he saved a lot of you in here. If we had time to listen to all of your stories, there'd be amazing redemption in it. Whew. But I'm just so happy to be alive. And now I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to destroy the works of the devil and to see Jesus get glorified until he returns. I want to see everyone saved, healed, delivered. Come on, I'm on a mission to get everyone in the, on the planet filled with the Spirit and teach them to yield because it's way easier when you're not trying to swim upstream like a dying fish. Amen? <laughs> you get in the flow. You look what the river's doing and you just get in it. Some of us, we, we get in and we're just testing the water. Well, I don't know. Let's see if it's to my liking. And the Lord's like, you got to get in that thing. You got to get in the river. Amen? Ooh, hey, I feel the joy of the Lord. You know, I used to get in trouble for laughing in church and I started getting in the word of God. I love uh, that Lori shared about reading the Bible. It's so important. You know, I like, I like to talk with God and I like to read the word. So I'll sit and, and I'll take time and I'll, I'll ask a lot of questions, but I'll read through the word. But I, I like to actually read, what do you, you know what I don't know. Help me know what I need to know. And then the Lord will say, go to 1 John. Read all the way, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. That's what I want you to read this morning. And I'll do that. And, and man, I'll just get fresh revelation out of the scripture. And I'll start talking to the God of the Bible. And I feel ignited like, like a rocket on a launch pad. You're like, <laughs> pretty soon you're just out of the, you're in the heavenly realm. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. So I, I like to laugh because I wasn't allowed to laugh when I was younger. Yeah, I don't think they read that part of the Bible that, you know, joy unspeakable, full of glory. <laughs> you know, the kingdom's made of a righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So I think it's a pretty good thing to do is just to laugh at the devil and laugh at the lie. <laughs> and you get to laughing and the devil gets all freaked out because he's like, oh no, he's not believing me anymore. You know, <laughs> who do you think you are? <laughs> Remember when you failed? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good medicine. I, I, who was here for the event? Yeah? Okay, a bunch of you. Who was not here for the event that we just had? Oh, a bunch of you. Oh, good. I can tell some of the same stories. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Lord shared with me to read this to you. <laughs> I don't even know what scripture it is, but it's in the Bible. You guys will recognize it, you Bible scholars. Here we go. And now we have run into his heart 
to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and his comfort. For he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time. An unshakable hope. Oh, we have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls. That's the mind, the will, the emotion. The mind is how you think and process. The will is how you choose and not choose to do the right thing. And the emotions is kind of like the, the, the rebellious kid. You can't make decisions based on feelings or you'll get in trouble. I feel like doing wrong things. But when I talk to God, he's like, no, 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 no. Be busy about the right thing so you don't say no to the wrong thing. Because the enemy wants to sift us like wheat. Amen? So let's be busy about the right thing. We have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat, which sits in the heavenly realm. Who beyond... <laughs> oh, this is good. I got to back up here. Ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat, which sits in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold. And where Jesus, our forerunner, has gone in before us, he is now and forever our royal priest like Melchizedek. He told me to read that to you, so there you go. So some of you people that need a lot of word, you know, you might say, well, he didn't even crack open the Bible. Okay, there, I did it. Um, I like to just flow. I mean, the whole word's in me. Jesus is in me, the hope of glory. And so a lot of times um, I'll go somewhere to speak and I'll just say, Lord, what do you want to do? And the Lord told me tonight, he said he wants miracles and healings and prophetic. And so I'm just going to flow. Is that okay? Sound good? Now, I write books. I want to just give a little plug. Um, it's not Awaken the Nations, by the way. It's called Awaken the Planet. So if you want to jot that down, that's the name of our stadium events. We do one every year. And so if you're anywhere in Washington State or you feel led to join us for that big event, it's going to be powerful. And there will be probably 150 senior pastors and ministry presidents, along with thousands of others that will join us for this year's Awaken the Planet. And the Lord, one year, he said, Nathan, I want you to book the Tacoma Dome. And I said, why? And he said, because I want to do a, a unity for the harvest event. And I said, great. I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, I want to awaken the planet. And I'm thinking, man, I was believing for a city and then a region. You know, he's, he's like talking about the whole planet. And, uh, and so we, we booked the Tacoma Dome. And I said, well, what do you want to call it? And he said, I just told you. So he gave me the title, and when I asked him what he wants to do, he reminded me again of the title. So the, the, what he wants to do is in the title. Revive means to make new. Awaken means to wake up. He said, I'm awakening my bride to the reality that I make all things new. I love that the word says all. <laughs> Some people are like, does it really mean, did it really say? Yes, it's all. All means all. In the Hebrew Greek, it's still all. It means he wants to make all things new new. Amen. He said, when two or more people are gathered and ask it in his name, it shall be done. Aren't you glad that it doesn't say maybe if you're good enough, it might be done. Kinda. It's like, it shall be done. It's an absolute, but you have to believe that it's true in order to see things happen like this. Man, I was um, driving down I-5 years ago, and I was just experimenting with hearing the voice of God. This is my new passion, is to train people to hear the voice of God. I write books. So I write, I write this book, and it was just about my own experience, and my, my passion is to teach everyone to hear the voice of God, because there's layers to the onion. You got to get the blockers out and the activators in, and if you get the blockers out of your spiritual ears and the activators in by revelation, impartation, by the truth of the word, you can hear God like never before. So I started to go on this journey of hearing God and I'm driving down at five and I hear the Lord in my thoughts. And he says, Nathan. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> he goes, take the next exit. And he said, there's a woman with a pinched nerve in her lower back and she's wearing a sweatshirt and I want to heal her. And I'm just like, I don't know about this, but I think it's God. 
I told my friend who was driving, I said, hey, take this exit right here. No, no, get over, get right here. Why? I, I think God just spoke to me. He said, the woman with a pinched nerve in her lower back, she's wearing a sweatshirt and God's going to heal her. Five words of knowledge. And he's like, well, okay. So we pulled off and I wasn't even convinced. I'm just new at this. I saw it happen a few times in other people. I knew it, God's no respecter of person. If he does it one, he can do it in another. So I just thought, well, and based on the word, my sheep hear my voice and the strangers they will not follow. I should be able to hear. So it just kind of clicked. So I pull off and there's only one woman in a sweatshirt. And I walk over to the lady. I'm kind of a big guy. So I was trying to tone it down and come in sideways and gentle and talk a little slower, a little softer. Ma'am, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm Nathan. And I felt God told me that you have a pinched nerve in your lower back. Is that true? It's like, how did you know that? And she's kind of like backing away. You know? <laughs> and I said, well, I felt like God said that there's a pinched nerve in your lower back. And he said, there's a woman at the rest stop with the sweatshirt. You're the only one in a sweatshirt. I said, can I pray for your back? She's like, okay. But they prayed for me for years and nothing happened. And just out of my spirit jumps. But if he reveals it, he heals it. And she just kind of looked at me. And then I just said, here, I said, can I just pray for your back? It won't take long. God's going to heal you. I was tempted to not believe based on her response, based on her experience. They prayed for me for years and nothing happened. So I was tempted to just jump in and say, oh, well, okay, well, God bless you. And then leave. And the Lord's like, no, you're not done. You're not done. Come on. Some of you got to step out on a limb and trust it's not going to break. You know, you're, you're worried it's not going to work out. Well, what if you look soup, stupid? Well, <laughs> I, I started realizing if I don't step out on a limb, then I've already missed it. So I want to step out on a limb. I want to take a risk. And tonight I'm going to take some risks, okay? Because if it's, if it's God, it's going to work. If it's me, it's not. But I'm okay with even looking silly or, or whatever. If you, don't, if you don't worry about what people think, you will get way more done for God. Because you'll never let the fear of man snare you from doing the thing God's asking you to do. Hallelujah. So I just said, can I put my hand on your back? And she's like, okay. you know. And I'm just like, Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name, I command this back to be healed. And I used to pray like this. Oh, Lord, if it be your will, that doesn't work. Believe me. I've tried it. It's like hit or miss. Maybe you get, maybe one gets healed by the grace of God out of a hundred. Oh Lord, if it be your will. Instead, all authority was given to Christ. Christ jumped in you when you got full of the Holy Ghost. So now Christ in you as the hope of glory is the healer who heals and the savior who saves. He delivers, he saves, he makes all things new. And he said, nothing's impossible for those who believe. So I'm just like, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. Right now, I commend this back be healed. Lord, I thank you. You make all things new that when two or more are gathered and ask it in your name, the name of Jesus, that it shall be done. Whoa. <laughs> I'm feeling the fire. I'm reliving the moment. But she got zapped. And she goes, oh. And I go, you're healed. I go, try it out. She goes like this. She bends. She's like, I'm healed. And she starts like looking and she, then she just goes, huh? and she just starts, ah! she's dancing and jumping and crying and laughing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is real. <laughs> anyway, that changed my life. It changed my life. And I've seen all kinds of miracles now, thousands and thousands of miracles. I travel all over the world. And I mean, I was in Haiti and there was this cow and the cow was lame. And the cow produced a gallon of milk, young cow. And a gallon of milk in Haiti is, is a lot of money. It's 12 bucks. Okay, but they only make like $4.35 a day there. So they have to work, you know, three men, three, three day, you know, three men to earn that gallon of milk. So the, the, they were distressed that their cow couldn't produce and the orphanage, they, want, they wanted milk. And, and they said, men of God, you know, you must pray for our cow. So what's wrong with the cow? He broke his leg and he can't make milk. And I said, I will pray. You know, I'm like, Lord, you better show up. This cow, cow's down there in a broken leg, you know. So I get down in the dirt with this cow. <laughs> he was having a hard time moving. 
So I grabbed his leg. <laughs> I started laughing. I'm holding the cow's leg. I'm just like, oh, Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. This cow is getting healed in the name of Jesus. I command this leg to be healed. And I just, I started laughing. And I, I was releasing something I wasn't aware of. But the cow just kind of goes, jumps up and starts dancing around, hopping around. All the orphanage uh, kids are jumping and laughing and going, oh, you know, like this. I was so excited to see that. And uh, it's just fun. You know, you see miracles, signs of wonders. But here's the thing, like Jesus is doing the healing. We're supposed to just do the praying and the believing. What if we all just took risks? What if we just pray for everything that moves? Hey, man, at least people get a blessing. Everywhere you go, you can be praying. You could be praying. You could be praying for people. You know, hey, I felt like I was supposed to pray for you. Is there something you need prayer for? You don't even have to have a word of knowledge. Like sometimes God will just say, pray for that one. You don't even have a word of knowledge. Just step out. Hey, I felt like God showed me to pray for you. He just loves you. Do, you. do you need prayer for something? Oh, no, I'm good. Oh, are you sure? And then all of a sudden, boom, right knee. You know, I felt like something was going on with your right knee. Is that true? Okay, how would you know that? That's weird. Well, what's, what's cool, though, is God wants to heal your right knee, and he's going to do that, and you're going to see that he really loves you. So can I just say a prayer? God's going to heal you, and you'll be so happy. And boom, all of a sudden, the knee gets healed. A lady came in our line a while back, and she said, I would like a new rib, please. And I said, a rib? It was like she was in the drive-thru, and, and I was like looking at her. Uh, you, want a, you want a What? I want, I want a new rib. I said, well, what happened to your rib? She's like, well, the doctors took it out. I was in an accident. She said she was a state worker and she, you know, totaled the car and it impacted her first rib. So they had to remove it because it was pressing into her body. And so I said, so you're believing for a brand new rib? And I'm thinking, of course, you know, like, of course, you know, I'd never seen that. But I just said, Lord, I thank you. And as soon as I did that, I thank you. And I, I looked up and I saw a rib floating there in the spirit. Some of you maybe can't handle this story, but I believe it's going to evict the spirit called unbelief because it comes out by prayer and fasting. It's a demon. He said, this kind comes out by prayer and by fasting. But the more we hear these stories, the more unbelief gets, uh, gets kicked out of, ooh, I just feel like God just wants to serve an eviction notice to that spirit of unbelief because people come from different walks, different backgrounds. I mean, I didn't even believe in miracles until I saw them. And then I'm like, oh, now I know, you know. So you may not know that this stuff is normal and maybe you're visiting, you're just like, oh, I don't know about these miracle stories. Well, you're here for a reason so you can hear these. So a deposit can be made in faith so that you can be used of God in the same kind of way. I know I'm just a guy that loves Jesus and hopefully you'll catch this. So some of it's better caught than taught, but I'll just share a few stories and then we're gonna demonstrate, okay? So anyway, I'm just like, Lord, I thank you. And I see this rib and it's hovering there and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. God made a provision for this. So I just said, I received this rib by faith and I release it in Jesus' name. She had a sunken in area right here where the first rib was missing, where they surgically removed it. And she goes, oh, oh, like this. She's kind of reacting, right? And I'm like, oh, God's totally doing it. And I just moved to the next person and she kept reacting and I moved to the next person. I'm just praying down the line with our team. And anyway, this lady, within the next 48 hours, had a brand new, fully formed rib. It was a creative miracle. And you know, it just made sense to me to be just straight with you. I've never seen it, so I didn't even have a grid to believe for what she's asking for, but the fact that she believed it could happen actually encouraged me. And I started thinking, you know what? If God can take a rib out of man and make a wool man from a rib for man, then God could put a rib back in a woman. Wool means out of, out of man. He takes a rib. I mean, think about how he makes it, mankind, you know, spits in some mud and boom and boom. And then later there's blind eyes are open to the same method. It's like, what? Anyway, you guys know that God heals today. Somebody has back pain and God, oh, by the way, we got x-rays and we got a file, a thick file of her rib replacement uh, or the, the rib removal surgery. Uh, so we, it shows where she was, has a scar and where the rib is missing after they pulled it out. And then we have now the x-ray after where it shows a fully formed rib and it's softer than the other bones. And it's like, what? Like, this is like possible? And so we've seen a lot of these types of creative miracles. One guy had polio. His leg doubled in size after prayer. He had to pull off his metal brace off his leg. Uh, and he was walking funny 
you know, like this for 60 years. And then all of a sudden he's got no leg brace and he's walking in the meeting like, like normal. And people are like, what happened to you? And he just couldn't even tell. All he could do is cry. For several weeks, all he could do when people said, what happened to you? Who's your surgeon? And he'd just start weeping because his life is literally transformed by the power of the living God who loves so big, right? And so anyway, I want to just say, he's going to use you. He's going to use you. We used to say, well, that person has the gift of healing. Well, listen, Jesus is the healer and he lives in you. The miracle worker lives in you. Reinhard Bonnke taught us in evangelism training, you know, the same place where I tried to end my life. God sends me back to learn from Reinhard Bonnke. And I'm in the same place where I tried to end my life, where the enemy tried to destroy me. And God sends me back to my biggest failure and says, I want you to go through this school. And it was, it was life-changing. And Bonky would get up in front of our class and he'd teach us. He's like, you know, you know, telling us things like, the Holy Spirit is not a bell for your bicycle. I'm like, hey, that's a good, you know. You don't have to defend the lion. Just let him out of the cage. You know, he taught us things like that. And he said, you know, I can't wait to hear what I am about to say. Those things stick with you. You know, it just builds faith. He could do it on a quick. I was like listening to him and taking notes. And the Lord's like, just let your spirit receive it. And, uh, and so there was a rich deposit made in us down there, just sitting under him and listening to him and learning from him. And one of the things I thought was so profound, I do a lot of um, stadium type events, evangelistic type uh, you know, crusades, whatever God gives me to do, whether it be a small group, a home group, or meeting with business people. I serve many different companies as a corporate advisor, and I don't have any cards or anything. I don't give cards out. Um, and so anyway, I, I started seeing breakthrough in the business world, like big breakthroughs, like unbelievable things happening and where they, the CEOs would start to ask for a word. What's God saying? Because they keep seeing it. Like that word was spoken and then it happened. That word was spoken and then it happened. That word was spoken and then it came to pass. And when you start building a track record for hearing God, but here's the thing, you, you might miss it a few times, right? To learn to get it right more often. So practice stepping out on a limb, trusting it won't break and watch how God supernaturally takes care of everything. And you'll get better and better. Your, your faith muscle is something that is built as you exercise it. And you know how we have different muscle groups in our body? It's just like different members of this gathering right now. We're different members, but we all belong to the body of Christ. But you might feel like a calf and somebody else might feel insignificant, like an earlobe or something. But we need every <laughs> we need every part of the body. Amen. And, uh, and so anyway, I've been learning about building my faith muscle, building my faith muscle for healing and miracles, building my faith muscle for prophetic accuracy, building my faith muscle for provision, building my faith muscle in every category. Just like your body has many different types of muscles, faith is also a category. Everyone has been given a measure of faith, but not everyone is exercising their faith muscle in all the categories. If you want to not look like Mr. Incredible with little bitty skinny legs and a huge upper body. I mean, he's like, comes in, he's like, he's got these little legs. You guys seen that? The Incredibles, he's like, you know, he's like, he's little bitty legs. If you don't want to look weird, you know, it's like these guys that go work out their chest and then they not, never touch lower body. And some guys are just hitting biceps and they got no tries. It just looks weird. So let God work out every part of your faith every component and then you'll start speaking to mountains and saying get out be thrown into the sea and it'll actually happen in jesus name amen okay somebody's got back pain and somebody with neck tension just wave at me if that's you back pain neck tension god's healing you right now god's healing you i command all pain to lift yokes burdens and weights come off the shoulders in the name of jesus angels assist me for the miracles tonight we just release the healing into your neck. Um, I may actually seen yokes being lifted off, weights that were compressing you, false responsibility. You're a liar. Get out, loose the people and go. Hey, in Jesus' name, we just command. Some people are watching online. I release the healing of God over, over you in the name of Jesus. And by the way, one of the keys is to say, Lord, fill me up. Say this with me. Lord, fill me up, fresh and new, to overflowing 
with your Holy Spirit. I receive you fully in Jesus' name. I lay my life down at your feet. I'm all in for you. I forgive myself. I forgive everyone who hurt me through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, now put your hand on your heart. God showed me something tonight. He wants to heal hearts. Yeah, where's that drummer? I saw him get a brand new heart. Where's the drummer? Are you the drummer? Yeah, what's your name? What is it? Paco? Oh, I said it right? Yeah, can you put your hand on your heart, bro? God's gonna do a work in you, man. I saw the hand of God on your heart when you were drumming. And I, first of all, I have to say, you're a really good drummer. I was amazed. You're very talented. Yeah, very talented, very unusually talented. But I saw the Lord doing something in your heart to set your heart on fire for him. But we're all gonna pray because we all need. Remember he said, I'll take out that heart of stone and I'll give you a new heart of flesh. What's the benefit? You start to feel and experience. Some of us, we're trying to numb ourselves because we don't wanna feel because what we've been feeling is not good. So we're trying to not have to feel. You can feel and respond. But if you cannot feel what God is showing you, you can't respond and you become irresponse, able or unable to give response. God wants to heal your heart. And so Father, in Jesus' name, just say this. Say, I'm all in, God. I'm giving you all of my heart tonight. I hold nothing back. You are my king. Oh God, heal my heart from the damage of religion, from spiritual pride, from accusations, and from the sin that so easily entangles. I repent and I confess. And I ask you, Father, to wash me. Help my heart receive your love right now in Jesus' name. Come on, I believe he's healing some hearts. Amen. <laughs> oh my goodness. Also, I saw somebody, okay, neck pain and back pain. Who actually felt something shift as we prayed that prayer? I want to see your hands. If you felt something shift, what happened? What did you experience? Is it gone? Amen. Oh, wow. So she had pain in the neck and we break the curse. If somebody said you were a pain in the neck, that's a curse. We break the curse. You're not a pain in the neck. You're a beautiful, wonderful lady and God loves you and you can't mess it up. Because his love's unconditional, you can't mess it up. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Bless her. Uh, yeah, so her neck just got healed. Like it was, it was hurting, and when she would do this, and now it's loosened up, and she's got freedom in there. It's just, is it just a little tinge? <laughs> Even that little tinge, I command that to go away too. 100%. God is a 100% healer. He's not a halfway God. This is not the halfway house. He's going to restore everything that moves in this place. If you need a healing, I want you to wave at me. Be honest. If you need a healing, oh, good. Uh, we're gonna, we got the right meeting. Amen. Okay, every time you hear when somebody gets healed and testifies like what she just received, that's for you. Some people are like, well, that's good for her. No, that's the testimony of Jesus. It's as the spirit of prophecy. What he did is what he does and what he'll do again. That's what that means. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preaching to myself at the same time. Hallelujah. Okay, now, who's got the feet thing? Who's got the feet pain? Feet pain, if you got feet pain, stand up. If you have feet pain, stand up. God wants to give you territory. You are a territory taker. Unusual grace and favor is not just on this house, but it's on the Taylor house. It's on the Taylor family. Your husband, God showed me, is going to come back better, stronger, and with a greater prophetic edge than ever before. It's going to cause this thing, there'll be a ripple effect. What the enemy meant for evil, God will use it for good. So watch what, what happens with Rick. He's getting, I bet you he's, he might be watching right now. We just bless you, Rick. You are on fire for Jesus. He's healing you. Uh, the black and blue, by the way, he's just miraculously taking that away. So watch how in the next couple of days, that's just going to be totally new. I just bless that. And Jesus, oh, I sometimes will say stuff as I'm in the spirit and I don't even realize what I'm saying because there's a way that seems right, but there's a way that is right. We're meant to flow. And when you don't have fear of man, which is a snare, it can hold up the anointing and the flow of God. So don't be afraid of what people think. Just know that God loves you and you can't mess it up. And then you'll take risk and you'll face fear and it'll get under your feet. So Lord, in Jesus name, we command the fear uh, the spirit of fear to come under our feet 
And we thank you, God, that those people who had hot feet, those people who had pain in their feet, the enemy was trying to attack them. And I just break the curse in Jesus' name. Through the blood of Christ, we say the curse is broken in Jesus' name. And I say any spirit that tried to afflict these who were anointed and appointed for such a time as it, get out and loose the people and go in Jesus' name. <laughs> and the Lord says, I'm giving you the territory. I'm giving you the expansion. I'm taking you higher. I'm giving you a greater capacity. I'm giving you a greater anointing. And my blessing shall rule and reign in your heart as you walk by faith and not by sight. In Je Whoa. Whoa. Hey, I'm getting blessed right now. I'm getting blessed. Amen. So it's, I don't know if you're feeling it, but whoo, hey, the pain's coming out of feet right now. I actually saw a serpent go out that way. It came and it went out that way. And, and I feel like the Lord's saying, I broke the assignment of witchcraft that tried to come against your feet. Enemy tries to attack feet so people don't take the ground. It's one thing to step on the ground and notice that there's giants. It's another thing to be like David and say, here's what I'm going to do to you. Who are you to defy the armies of the living God? Here's what I'm going to do to you. And then, and then he's like, <laughs> and pretty soon, <laughs> amen. The giants falling tonight. Amen. Come on, somebody. Witchcraft is broken. The curse is broken. Come on. Unlocking the inheritance of God. I commend every foot to be healed in this place. Your feet are shod in the readiness of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do me a favor, wiggle your toes, wiggle your toes. Yeah, as you're wiggling them, just say, thank you, Lord, for healing my feet. Thank you, Lord, by your stripes I'm healed. You're claiming what God gave you. He gave you the health, he gave you the wholeness, he gave you the blessing, and now you're receiving from the promise, amen? Who actually feels the change in your feet? I wanna acknowledge what the Lord, not me, what the Lord is doing. <laughs> He's feel, what are you feeling, bro? Tell us. As you're moving, it's being better and better. What tell us what's happening? He had some kind of planner for situs and it, it's canceled. The curse is broken. It does? It does? Hey, come out here. Come just walk over to the right. And I just want you to test it out. Just, just here's what, here's how you receive the fullness of the healing God paid for. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. He knows how we do it. His faith is like, I'm going to jump on him, right? That's what you do. You got to step into it. It's one thing to get a word. It's another thing to own it and to receive it and then to walk in what you've received. So here, just come right over here. And as you're walking, you'll notice they're getting completely restored. There's angels all over this place. Come on, God is, is giving you the victory. The battle is won and you're gonna take the ground. You're gonna take the ground. He's gonna give you that land. He's gonna give you that house. He's gonna give you the increase and you're gonna know that it was God. Come on, say hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I gotta step down here. I gotta humble myself. <laughs> I don't wanna be up on a stage, come on. I want to be down here with you in the river. Woo. Hey, Woo. okay. <laughs> oh, can we just have some fun? Okay. Who? Ha. Yeah. There's a lot of glory over here. Okay. We got angels all around us here and there's healing happening in the house of the Lord. Okay. Somebody has a problem with their side. I saw a pain in the side. It's a woman. Where are you? Pain in the side. That's you. Oh my goodness. Here, stand up again. Let's just do this. It's a prophetic act, guys. The enemy's been trying to attack her. I'm going to remove it by faith. Ready? Father, in Jesus' name, I command that curse to be broken. <laughs> and in Jesus' name, we just bless Lori. I pray for protection over Lori. I pray for your grace to abound in her. I thank you, God, that she's going to get more blessed moving ahead than she's ever been blessed in the past. I feel like the Lord's saying the, the best is always yet to come. The best is always yet to come. Just like I gave you the building, the Lord says, I'll give you many buildings. Just like I put you by the airport, I'll put you by many airports. I, I, I have no limitation, no shortage, no lack. You're going to expand in this season. The attack came before the 
expansion, but the assignment that came to try to stop you actually compelled you to press into me all the more. And you've received a greater anointing, which is a greater capacity to destroy the work of the devil. You're in a, you're in a humble place. And the Lord says, I'm going to exalt you. And I'm going to continue to make your name great in the land. I'm not done, says God. I'm going to take care of every one of your enemies. The enemy that rises against you as you've been chosen and selected by me, says God, will come under your feet and you will see every assignment get canceled and we'll walk together in this victory and I'll give you the ground and I'll give you the workers and I'll give you the worshipers and I'll give you the increased finance. I'll give you the buildings and I'll give you the land. Just keep me first. Remember what you said, the vine and the branches abide in me. I'll abide in you and you will hide in the cleft of the shadow, the shelter, the almighty with my hand covering you, says God. Oh, shaka rabasa. Hey, bless her. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Okay. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Somebody needs. Uh, somebody needs healing in your heart. Who had a heart issue, like a heart thing? Yeah. Can you put your hand on there again? Let's just pray and agree. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for her heart that is being healed by you. I command the beats to go perfectly normal. Ooh, in the name of Jesus, heart be fully restored. You're not going to have that pain that would kind of come and then go. And sometimes it kind of come for a while and then start to diminish and you have to kind of take it easy. And I feel like the Lord's also, he's doing something with your adrenals to make them whole. Does that make sense? Your adrenals. And he's, a, he's, he's, a, he's healing the adrenals. Hey, and then he's giving you the energy level who you don't need all the coffee. You're just going to be all amped up by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> by the way, somebody here, like you, you need that too. And you're like, uh, I like that. Just say, I receive it. That's how you, if God says a word for someone, there's someone else who I could just hear in the spirit is saying, I receive it too. Who did that? Right back here. Oh, it was him right here. He said, I receive it too. Praise God. You're receiving it too, buddy. Praise the Lord. He knows in Jesus name. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Hey, cause the Lord loves miracles and healings. You know, Healings and miracles are the dinner bell for salvation. When God begins to heal, people go, oh my gosh, he is real. Because he knows, that, I mean, people know that, that all these people aren't play actors. Like some of them have to be real, right? It's like, uh, and, and the point is, uh, when you start seeing it, you start easily begin, begin to believe it. And what he does for one, he'll do for another. If you see somebody being used of God, you should know this is what God wants to do with you, through you. So be faithful with whatever he's entrusted and you'll see him expand you in the anointing and, and in the breakthroughs, okay? So is there somebody um, who has ringing in the ears? God wants to heal you for, yeah, okay, I thought so. Okay, look at all the people. Keep your hand up. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, ten. Okay, ten. Wow, perfect ten. I believe God's going to heal ten for ten. He doesn't bring up problems that he doesn't want to solve. So we already know we're halfway there. Now let's agree and you say this. Say, I will no longer have ringing in my ears from this moment on. I declare and decree that the ringing ends now. In Jesus' name, now I command all ringing to stop. Ooh, we just prayed for a guy who couldn't hear and his ears opened miraculously and a paper, a piece of paper fell on the ground like this, hits the ground and the man after prayer, he heard the paper hit the ground. And his wife goes, did you hear that? Because he looked like this. And he goes, well, yeah. And she goes, you're not supposed to be able to do that. He goes, that's right. I'm healed. <laughs> that's amazing. And we just said a simple prayer. I, I, my friend, I, we were in Texas. My friend, I have an assistant when I travel. I didn't bring him here because I have friends here. But, but usually I'll bring my assistant. And I told him, the grace that's on me, the favor that's on me, it's going to come on you because you're serving me. And he's like, well, I'll receive it. He's learned that. And so he's working my book table and the guy comes up and pulls, pulls out his watch. It was a beautiful, like two-tone gold and, and silver Rolex. And he takes it off and he hands it to him. And he goes, God told me to give you this. And my, and my assistant, Jeff, is like, are you sure? <laughs> and God's trying to bless him. And he's not sure if he's worthy. Amen. But, he, but, but he's like, okay, all right. Are you sure? And the guy's like, I'm sure. And he goes, is it for Nathan? He goes, no, God told me to give it to you. 
And he goes, okay, all right. And he just kind of put it in his pocket, didn't even put it on his wrist. And then after he goes, Nathan, uh, I mean, I'm working your book table. Um, somebody gave me a gift. I mean, do you want me to give it to you or is it for me? I go, no, dude, it's for you. He's like, well, it's a Rolex. I go, oh, that's awesome. Remember I told you the grace that's on me is going to come on you because you're serving me. You're connecting to a grace. And he was blown away. So he went home to his wife and she was kind of upset because he's at the church and he's serving a lot and she doesn't really like it sometimes. And so uh, she hears the story about the Rolex. She's like, so when's church going to start? Maybe I should come with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that funny how things work? But God has a way, right, of causing things to work together for good. And so anyway, she goes, well, could I just come and I'll sit in the balcony. I'll just be in the back, you know. But it's just fun to see those things happen. So some of you, God just wants to give you a little kiss from heaven. And if he goes to try to bless you, receive it. You're worthy because of him. If somebody wants to bless you with a meal, don't rob them of their blessing. Let them give to you. Amen. And, and just receive it. And God will keep on accelerating. You'll have plenty of time to bless. You know, I asked God for an airplane. Last time I was here, um, I had asked God for an airplane because I was upset the way they were treating me in the, in the airplanes. And, you know, mash up. I felt like a prisoner and I was a customer and it felt weird. So I started declaring on my social platforms. I'm like, COVID is canceled. I said, repeat this. And I said to the audience, repeat what I'm saying. COVID is canceled, you know. The scandemic is over. It's officially over, <laughs> I started saying. Anyway, and uh, it was after that. But I, I came here and I ministered. And, uh, and I remember I, I, it was during uh, the prayer strike, if you guys remember. And James Gall was here. I was sitting up front. And James looks out in there and he points at me. He goes, the scepter of the Lord is pointed towards you. I'm like, praise God, whatever that means. I had to go look it up. <laughs> and he told me to come up. And I, I went up and he honored me. And then I came back and I, I ministered. But anyway, this, this farmer, uh, God told me to go pray for him. And I ended up ordaining his family and, and, and praying for his family and prophesying over his family. And he says, Nathan, you blessed us so much. He goes, I'd really like to give you a gift. And I go, well, you don't have to do that. He said, oh, no, I'm going to give you one of my planes. I'm like, I thought he was going to give me a... Olive Garden $100 gift certificate. You know, it's like, it's like, well, I got three planes. I'm like, you do? That's, that's pretty amazing. And he's like, yeah, and I'm going to give you my Cessna. I just rebuilt the motor, runs like a top. It's a Cessna 182, four passengers, and a very nice plane. And he said, yeah, he said, I'm going to give you my airplane. And I'm like, well, that's amazing because I asked God for an airplane. And last time I was here at the healing rooms, as I was leaving to fly back home to preach at our church, the Lord says, um, he says, wait a minute. And I paused and the lady behind the counter said, hey, God told me to give you this. And she gives me a paper airplane. And I received it. And I said, oh, what is this for? She goes, well, God said that you would know. And I said, Lord, what is this for? And the Lord said, you asked me for a plane. And so I'm looking, I'm like, Lord, this isn't the kind of airplane I asked for. But then he goes, well, you asked me for a plane, and that represents the promise. And I was like, oh, then I'm receiving it in Jesus' name. So I got this paper airplane, and I'm like, I just received an actual airplane. Because I translated through the Spirit, through my faith, that God just answered my prayer. I said, Lord, could I have a plane? I'm getting kind of tired of these militant stewardess. I feel like a prisoner in these airplanes. And can I just have an airplane? And so he gives me an airplane. So they fly it over to my city and I have an airport by my house, you know, international airport. But anyway, so I had it for a while, but I saw a vision. I saw a seed, a bag of golden seed, and it was on the side of the airplane door in the spirit. And I said, what does that mean? And the Lord said, it's a seed plane. And I said, I know I should know what that means, but what does that mean? And the Lord said, a seed is for sowing. And I remember when God told me, he said, tell people, stop eating your seed. Your seed is not for your consumption. Your seed is for sowing. And if you do not sow it, God cannot move his hand on your behalf to give you the increase. If you eat your increase, then you, you hinder your yield. And the Lord showed me also that your yield is your willingness. When you have a heart that says yes, before he even speaks, you're actually gonna to begin to hear his voice. Pride blocks the ears. Humility wants to be led and gets the empowered ear of the Lord. So you start to hear God, you, faith comes in, faith is imparted, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Jesus is the word who became flesh. So when Jesus speaks to you, written and spoken word, Raymond Logos, when he speaks to you, he's imparting faith, why? Because he wants to shield you 
with faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Jesus, the word, is speaking to us so that he can protect us. He hides us in the shelter of the shadow of himself and puts his own hand over us to protect us and empower us to anoint us and appoint us so that we can go forth just like he did. Destroying the works of the devil, delivering life and life abundant. Some of you are being healed just hearing this. Yeah, come on. When something like that said, that's faith. And boom, you go, I receive it in Jesus' name. Some of you are waiting on promises. Get ready because you're about to see it. You're about to see the fulfillment of every promise in this season of acceleration. And some of you don't realize how God's preparing this mighty harvest. Some of you, you're praying and believing for prodigals. They're coming over the hill right now in Jesus' name. He's going to set your kids free. Some of them are so techy, they're just buried in the computer and the phones, and that's their life. And God's like, I'm going to break that fantasy stronghold, and I'm going to set them ablaze to come serve at the church and at the ministry and serve at the healing rooms. And they're going to get so on fire that when their kids, when their, their friends tell them, hey, let's go do this mischievous thing, they'll be like, you know what? I'm just really not, I'm not really feeling that's for me. And there'll be examples, and there'll be leaders, and they'll be raised up to impact the nations. Amen? Hallelujah. I received that too. My, my girls uh, serve the ministry. One of them is, is younger. We just got her a car and she's all excited and she's been going to the gym and I, you know, and the Lord said, start speaking into your children, what you're believing they'll become. Stop speaking over them, how they're failing, how they didn't do it right. Why didn't you clean your room? You can't have that because you didn't do that. Let's not wreck them. Instead, let's say, Hey, I believe in you. I love you. You were made to change the world. I can see the potential in you. God has a plan. You are perfectly loved. Hey, I noticed you didn't clean up your room. You must have been busy. Hey, I know how you like it clean. Can dad help you a little bit? Let's just do it together. Really, dad? And they start helping them and you're cleaning and they're like, oh, you know, and you start ministering to them. Cleanliness is next to godliness, right? And you start telling them how, you know, I notice you have been tidying up more. Hey, you know, I notice your grades are getting better. You know, I love that because it shows that you actually really care, you know, that we're investing in you. And I really appreciate that you're being wise about who you're choosing to hang out with. Like, you know which ones are, you know, you're, you know which ones are going to lead you the wrong way. And you're kind of keeping them at bay. But the ones that you know you can trust and you've watched them and you've seen how they live and you've let some of them in close. And I just want to say, good job. You're, you're getting so wise in the Lord. And I know he's speaking to you and it's amazing to watch. You call those things that are not as though they are so they can be. Not, you know what, you need to clean up your room. You're a slob. Don't do what your parents did. Amen. Some of my mom would get freaked out if I didn't do everything. She starts hitting us with stuff and whacking us with hangers. And one day I took her broom away and I smashed it over my knee and I threw it on the ground. I said, you will never do that again. And she was beating me down. And my dad is trying to pastor a church and I'm running around laughing and I'm getting reprimanded for that. I couldn't have any fun no matter what I did, it seemed like. But I kept laughing. I kept laughing because it was who I was. I was experiencing God at a young age with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And so laugh at the enemy. Laugh at what happened to you. What happened to you doesn't define you. What defines you is who God says and what he sees. And he says, you're more than a conqueror through Christ. You've been seated in heavenly place. You're a joint heir and a co-laborer with God. You can't lose a battle that's won. And he'll give you everything you need for life and godliness. So if you don't have it, you don't need it. But when you do need it, you'll have it. If you have a deadline, he'll throw you a lifeline. Come on, you need a little courage? Start stepping out with the measure of faith that you have and he'll give you more. You need a financial breakthrough? Start giving your way out. Come on. You don't have anything to give? Well, be like the one that, you know, all I have is this little oil and this little bit of bread. All I have is this little fish and this little loaf. As soon as you put it in his hands, he's going to bless it. He's going to break it open. And he's going to start passing it out. And everyone will have more than enough to co-labor with God and see Jesus get his reward. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Whoa. Now the ringing in the ears is canceled. You can just agree with that because two agree on a thing and it's established. So just say, thank you, Lord that I will no longer have ringing in my ears. In Jesus' name, I declare and decree that the ringing is canceled now. Now, in Jesus' name. I was in the restaurant with a new couple we just met, and this man came to beg for food from our table, and I thought, well, I'll give him food, you know, but it's weird. It's a really nice restaurant by the water, and he comes up, and his, I said, what's your name? He said, Tommy, and I said, 
I said, well, what's your story? I said, did you used to be a fisherman? He goes, yeah, I, I was a fisherman. And I said, and were you a, a crabber before that? You worked on the crab boats? He goes, how'd you know that? The Holy Spirit just gave me a compassion. He's begging for food. At first I'm thinking, this guy needs to get out of here. This is my meal. And the Lord quickly corrects me before I opened my mouth. You know, greater is he that is in me and he, we can do all things through Christ and all that. And so I'm just like, okay, what do you see, God? I'm about to get offended. And the Lord's like, hey, humble yourself. This man needs me. So I pray for him. I say, hey, can I pray a blessing for you, Tommy? He goes, it's Captain Tommy. Okay, Captain Tommy, can I pray a blessing for you? And he goes, yeah. He goes, sure. And I, I said, Lord, I bless Tommy. I thank you for providing all that he needs according to your riches and glory. Show yourself mighty in him. Tommy, say this prayer. It's going to change your life. Say, Lord Jesus, fill me. I receive you as my Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross. I receive the gift of salvation. And I give you my whole heart. And I ask you to fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. So he gets filled with the Spirit. He surrenders, pray, prays the prayer. And I go, God showed me you had a problem with your right ear. What's wrong with your ear? He goes, well, I, it went dead in, in uh, Desert Storm. And I go, really? I go, well, God wants to heal it. I go, can I just put my finger on it just real quick? He goes, well, okay. He thought that was kind of weird, but I just go like this. I go, in Jesus' name, be open. I touch the lobe of his ear. It goes, Gzz. he said he heard something and he felt something. He goes, oh, and he goes, well, I can hear, I can hear. And he goes, I mean, we're in a restaurant. It's nice. It's dim lighting. It's a very fancy place. And it's right on the water and people are having their little candles and they're having their little special. And he's like, I can hear. <laughs> it's like, I can hear. And I'm just like, oh, that's awesome. You know, so he did get saved. He's begging for bread. So we start loading him up with stuff. I have creme brulee. He's got a gaping wound on his hand. And I'm like, Ugh, gross. I don't even want my creme brulee now. But he just got healed and saved. That was amazing. And my friends, these new friends had never seen ever a miracle before. We owe the world an explanation for the hope that lies within us. Who are we to say no to the one who made us? We, we got to get used to saying, yes, God, yes, God. We used to sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. <laughs> It'd be weird if we were like, no, Lord, no, Lord, no, Lord, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, that song was kind of redundant and silly, but I mean, the fact is like the more you say yes to God, that's the acceleration. Acceleration, I would say, is not so much a season the way to accelerate is yes, God. Yes, Lord. What would you have me to do? Yes, God. Would you like me to do anything for you, God? I love you so much and thank you for this day and I acknowledge you and now you're pastrate. You abide in him and he's a lamp under your feet, right? But we abide first, then he comes and meets us there. We seek first and then we find. We knock first and then he comes to us. There's something about active pursuit, you'll automatically resist the devil and he'll have to flee. And the promise that God keeps reminding me of is, I'll never allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able to resist. And I'll always provide an escape route for every temptation. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now somebody's getting healed. Wave at me if you've just felt something happen in your body around this place. If you've been healed and you know something's changed, just, just shout it out. Woo. Did anybody's ringing stop? Yeah, good. Come on, let's acknowledge what the Lord has done. Amen. Come on, that's Jesus. That's a prophetic word. Tell us what happened. Oh, she's had ringing in her ears since 2012, you guys. And she does not have ringing anymore in her ears. Praise God for that testimony. Praise God. And by the way, when you get a chance... Uh, come to the team and speak that into their camera so they can keep track because every time somebody with that kind of issue hears your story, they'll get healed too. It's a ripple effect, amen? Uh, somebody else, what happened? <laughs> somebody else, go ahead, what happened? Well, I don't know what happened, but our legs have been like, like a bengay all over them. <laughs> oh, she says her legs have felt like she put bengay all over her legs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like on fire. Her legs are on fire. She feels it's like liquid icy hot on her legs. Isn't that great? Did you have any issues with your knees? The sciatic. Can you stand up real quick? He's healing you completely. Now, do me a favor. Just do a couple little, like little ones and then just see if it's a change. Lord, I thank you. All pain, get out. Sciatic, be healed. All The whole system. 
be healed in Jesus' name. Hey, right now, I command the cells to... <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you're healed in the name of Jesus. Come on. And by the way, shakarabasanda. Praise the Lord. Well, when you're moving, are you feeling a change? You're still feeling it. By the way, if somebody's still feeling like something like that, a sensation or, or tingling or fire or whatever, they're being healed. And you know when it'll stop is when it's complete. He's just going to keep healing you until you walk out of here completely whole. And you won't have that problem anymore. Amen. Come on, Jesus. Okay, somebody else. Um, oh, I saw somebody with hip pain. Who's got the hip pain? Hip, hip, hooray. Come on, you're getting healed right now. Here, just stand up and try your hip out. He's healing you completely. You're not going to have a hip problem anymore. You can just say hip, hip, hooray. Hippity do da, hippity day. I got healed over there where they pray. <laughs> I'm just saying, God's healing you. So go ahead, do me a favor. Just do something like this. Yeah, remember what Jesus would say, go wash in the Jordan, right? He'd go do this seven times. He gives an instruction that if you'll follow it, then you'll see. It. Amen. He would always say to do something. So I've learned this technique in following the Holy Ghost. You have somebody do something to test it out because there's no faith if there's no action. Action is, is, is faith and faith is action. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So if you're believing for what you've not yet seen, you're going to do something maybe you weren't doing before. And so step out and believe God and watch how he does it. He's healing you completely. You're not going to have that problem anymore. If I get the word of knowledge right, I know it's going to happen. I'm just 100% persuaded, 100% convinced that he's the healer who heals and the Savior who saves, the deliverer who delivers, and the miracle worker. I don't have to do it. I don't take the, the, the credit for anything. I don't take the blame either. I pray and believe and see the thing happen, and I'm all excited if it's partial or if it's all or whatever. And so just keep praying and believing. Amen? Somebody else that needs healing in your knee. Who's got a knee issue? It's a guy on the right side, right side. Is that you? Okay, you're, stand up, stand up. Oh, it's your left. Well, it's my right when I'm looking at you. So in Jesus' name, I command, here, put your hand on your knee. Hallelujah. Is there, is there another knee problem? Another knee problem? Stand up if you have a knee problem. It, yeah. Stand up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, stand up. Stand in proxy. Go ahead. In Jesus' name, we command the coach's knee to be healed. We command his, all the pain to get out. Reproductive, reconstructive, uh, uh, zap him, God. Brand new. In Jesus' name, I, I release the healing power of God into that knee. I say cells, joints, tendons, muscles, tissue, meniscus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. He's healing you up. Even as you're moving it, begin to thank God. This is how you partner with it. You say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're making all things new. Thank you, Lord, that the good work you began in me, you'll see it through to the day of completion. I'm being completed because Jesus loves me. He's healing you 100%. Somebody else over here, knees. Yeah, I command those knees. If you're around them, just stretch your hand out. We release the healing power of God. Yeah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth paid with his own blood that you would be whole and he loves to do miracles. It's like he's saying, I love you. He loves us regardless if we got a miracle. But sometimes you'll see how he moves in a certain way. And the best way to receive your miracle is begin to celebrate someone else's. You know how many times I've seen somebody go, well, I didn't get healed. Or they'll go, well, it's not all better. It's like, what are you believing for it not to be better? Come on, let's agree with God here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Are your knees, anybody who, who felt something change in your knees as you thanked God? As you thanked God and started moving them, uh, just wave at me if you felt a change in your knees. Right here? Okay, stand up and testify. What happened? Come on, his wife. Is that your wife? Come on, she heard in his knees. It goes pop, 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 right? It goes pop, pop, pop in his knees. By the way, that's a prophetic word for those of you who are still waiting for yours because you're next. But that, that is powerful. So tell us, like, how many pops do you know? Was it like three? <laughs> three or four is like, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> I feel the fire of God on me. Even just hearing the testimony is so powerful, isn't it? Come on, isn't God good? Give the Lord a hand. That's amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord told me tonight is a night of miracles. And so if you have family members, man, one time I was speaking in a conference and I'd never done this before. I said, everybody pull out your phones, pull them out right now. And people pulled out their phones 
And I said, call anyone who needs healing in your family or your friend groups. How are we doing on time? Am I supposed to, am I supposed to be done? A little bit more? Okay, I'll go a little bit more. But here's, here's the thing. I'll be back tomorrow ministering with um, Papa Gill in the morning, and then I have to jump on a plane. So if you guys want to, 930, we'll be back here. Papa Gill asked me to join him for that, and we'll be right back here tomorrow morning at 930 if you want to do that. But um, I'm going to turn it over in just a minute. But I just want to ask, if you just received healing and you know something's different, I just want you to stand to your feet. Let's acknowledge what the Lord has done. Real quick, just stand to your feet, you receive healing. Come on, can we just celebrate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> well, that's a lot of people getting healed. And so that's amazing. So let me, just do a, <laughs> let me just do a blanket prayer for anyone else who hasn't received fully. Lord, I thank you right now. Every sickness and every disease is under the blood. We command every assignment from the enemy to be canceled. And Lord, we release your power into every cell, joint, tendon, muscle, tissue, organ. Be restored fully in the name of Jesus. And from this day forward, those who are having trouble sleeping in the night, maybe you have pills that you need to take, or you feel like, you know, if I got to just drink myself sideways. Listen, there's a spirit of alcohol that's tried to attack this house. Jesus made wine, but he said, don't be drunk where there's an excess. So there's something about be filled with the spirit so you can be drunk with the new wine. But to be drunk with artificial substance is a substitute. And I, I have wine from time to time with dinner and I enjoy it. But here's the thing. If you know you have a problem, you can't stop. There's bottles piling up. You just need to go, you know what? Spirit of alcohol, I, I come out of agreement with you. I acknowledge that that's not my portion. I'm supposed to be free. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed or is really free. So I reject and renounce participating with a destroyer in my life and I give you alcohol, God. It's the one-step program. Confess your sin. He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so if that's you, maybe it's prescription pills, maybe it's pornography, whatever sin is perpetuating in your life where it's draining your Holy Ghost juice, you need to be able to just say, Lord, I give that to you. I repent. I confess that as sin. Maybe it's something where you're watching fantasy shows and you're not really reading the Bible or feeding your spirit. No condemnation for those who are in Christ. But get right because he's going to shine the light on areas where he, the things that the enemy is trying to gain a, a foothold to lead to a stronghold to defile many. Don't let the enemy start defiling the land that God is blessing. And let God take you deeper into his heart. When he heals your heart from damage, like some of you got new hearts tonight. I saw the hand of God touching hearts, removing hearts of stone, putting in new hearts of flesh. And there's a new flame, a new fire that's going to come in this house for healing. And it's going to deliver people in a whole new level of hope that will anchor them around the heart of God so they can love big. And so I just bless you. I bless your finances. Uh, I pray for increase. I pray for acceleration. I pray that as Lord, as you're healing Rick Taylor, uh, Lord, from the attack of the enemy, Lord, that he comes back. I prophesy when he comes back, he'll be stronger than ever. He'll be more energetic than ever. Uh, Lord, he'll be the perfect weight. And all that bruising, we just command it to go in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for even new vision, that there's an expansion that God has in his heart for this healing center and for the other healing centers around the nation. So we just bless the expansion. Pray for many workers to make light the work. Many hands make light the work. And even the council, I see wisdom in the multitude of council, not just any council, but the council God assigns to speak into a particular matter. And so I just bless that, that council that's being established for the glory of God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And then lastly, I just want to say, when... When God told me to sew the plane, I already knew that he was going to give me a jet. And you know what's kind of cool is when you're a friend of God, when you're a friend of God, you know his ways and you know his heart and you hear his voice and you walk with him close and you just stay close. He doesn't have to do anything for us. He's already shown us everything. He's already given us everything for life and godliness. There's nothing better than just being a child or a son, right? A child of God. That's, the, that's where it's at. It's not about trying to get a name tag and I'm an apostle or prophet or evangelist, pastor, teacher. I'm a child of God. I'm a servant. And he's sheltering me with his love. Believe for big things, but thank God for everything because gratitude will key the door 
but he actually showed me I'm going to reap what I sow means the same type of substance. When I gave watches, I was given watches. When I gave suits, I received suits. I don't even like to wear suits, but I have a whole bunch of suits. And the more I gave suits, the more I'd have people giving me suits. I got all these Italian suits. I don't even really wear them. Probably need to lose some weight so I can fit into some of them. But here's the thing. God wants you to know that you will reap what you sow. Sow love, love will come back. Sow goodness, you'll, re you'll be rewarded with plenty. You give cars away, people start giving you cars. I give cars all the time. If people giving me cars, I, I don't even need any more cars. I think I got seven four-wheel drives. I don't even need any more. I've been buying land. God said, Nathan, you want land? I'm like, yeah, I want land. He goes, I'm going to give you territory. I said, really? I go, you mean spiritually? He goes, no, both. So I started buying property. I bought nine properties in the last year. Really? And I'm not bragging. I'm, I'm bragging on God, but... But I'm just like, Lord, for my 50th birthday this year, could I have some land in Cleelum? He's like, yeah. I said, I'd really love something on the river and maybe even the mountaintop. So what did he do? I got like 170-some acres of riverfront mountaintop. You wouldn't believe it. It's amazing. It's like his blessing have overtaken me. And, and I think it's because I'm a big sower. And it's not because I'm a big sower so much. It's because I'm a big lover and I can't wait to bless. And so if you're a person that's kind of feeling stuck in the area of finances, just take what you have and give the best you can and don't let anything from the world own your heart. If he has your whole heart, he can move through your whole body. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. Some of you in the future, you'll be millionaires. Some of you will be multi, multi millionaires. The other day I saw a guy and I told him, you're gonna be a billionaire. I've only said that to one other person and he was in here and, and, and he's like, I know because he'd already gotten that word multiple times and he received it again. So just don't, don't limit God. Don't limit God. Believe God for big things, but just let him have your whole heart so that nothing from the earth can possess your heart but him. And then there's nothing he wouldn't do for you. And you're gonna rule and you're gonna reign. And this revival, this awakening that's coming in, you're meant to be in there as a forerunner in the face. Grab your piece of the net and let God send the fish into the net. One act of obedience can literally cause but Lord, we've toiled all night and have caught nothing. But at your word, we'll cast our net on the other side. And one act that will be in the same water, same net, same method, same dudes, same boat. One act of obedience. And all of a sudden he commands a blessing and the fish get sent in to the nets. And they're just like, whoa. And a whole bunch of other boats had to come help them bring in the massive catch. And that's what's going to happen right here at Santa Maria Healing Room. So God bless you. <laughs> we love you. And I know we'll see you in the future. And you look even better than you look right now. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not Jesus, but I'm up here. <laughs> um, thank you, Nathan. That was so good. So, hey, Stacy mentioned that we're going to take an offering. So we're going to do that now. And... Um, I know usually on Monday nights we don't, so if you're prepared and you want to, you can give, and if you weren't prepared, that's good too. So, Lord, we bless this offering. It'll all go to Nathan to bless him, and we ask that you just multiply whatever's given, that you just, the word Nathan just gave, that you release that even tonight. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for joining us online. We'd love to know where you're watching from or how we can pray for you, so please let us know in the comments and be sure to share this content with your friends. Also, if you want prayer or prophetic encouragement, we offer free ministry available on a first come, first serve basis on our website. Be sure to check the description of this video for more information. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again soon. Here's a word from some of our other ministries. Are you ready to change the culture of your marriage? We'd love to have you at the next set of Bridge Marriage Trucks. And it's not just for troubled marriages, it's for hurting to healthy and everyone in between. Also, for singles, dating, and engaged couples mm -hmm. who just want to learn about marriage from a biblical perspective. We would love to see you guys there. Yep. I guarantee that each and every one of you have all had something said like this over you sometime in your life. You sound just like your mother or you act just like your father. Why does this happen? It happens because we have a physical DNA coming down through our family line. Did you know that we also have a spiritual DNA? The Bible calls it blessings and curses. And it's interesting, in Deuteronomy 27 and 28, the blessings and curses are listed. And the 
The curses are four times as much as the blessings. Shortly I'm holding a seminar where I'll be explaining about generational curses and, and how to break them so God's blessings can be released in your life. We'd love to see you there. Do you want to see God heal through you? Join us for an upcoming weekend training to be equipped, trained, and commissioned to join our healing teams here at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria. This local two-day in-person seminar will be jam-packed with teachings, Q&A, and activation, so you'll be confident to minister God's healing here on a healing team. To learn more about this training, please look at the description below. We look forward to seeing you there.